Viewers, I, I disagree with the idea of introducing caste and religious identity as a quasi-reservation in the higher judiciary of India. Judges should not be appointed on the basis of whether they are from the minority community or not. Or whether they are from this caste or that caste, that is not the way you appoint judges. But this is only one of the many reasons I disagree with the Vadra Congress manifesto today. I also disagree with the idea of introducing some random apprenticeship for young people in India. Apprenticeship? That also 8,000 rupees a month, Mr. Chidambaram and Rahul Gandhi? For well-qualified, highly qualified Indians? 8,000 rupees a month, be happy. That's the Congress idea. An apprenticeship is not a job. And Indians need jobs, not internships and apprenticeships. And Mr. P. Chidambaram must know that 8,000 rupees a month is not enough to live on. It is less than the minimum wage. Indians need jobs. Rahul Gandhi, jobs, not apprenticeships. Foreign investment, infrastructure development, growth, economic growth, Viksit Bharat, this creates jobs. And you want to take us back 30 years? And throw, okay, you'll be happy with 8,000 rupees a month. This is an apprenticeship, be happy. This is a Congress party gift to you. What rubbish? I also disagree with this idea of moving more items from the concurrent list over which both the center and state have some jurisdiction entirely to the state list, which is another manifesto promise of the Congress party. What is this? India needs to be unified and strong. And the Congress party is saying, reduce the powers of the central government, reduce the powers of the central government, give it away to the states, give it away to the states. Why? Because you're not in power at the center. The powers of the center are reduced and the powers of the state are increased. We wonder why you're doing it because are you doing it in the name of federalism or do you want to break up the country? And since it comes from the party of Rahul Gandhi who goes around the whole world saying India is not a nation anyway, it's some kind of a negotiation. I find his intentions completely ominous and suspicious. You should too. Not that everything in the Congress party, Vadra Congress manifesto is bad, but it's, it's too predictable. It's too hackneyed. It sounds like the manifesto of another era. It's not a 2024 manifesto for sure. That's my take. We're debating this tonight. The hackneyed Congress party manifesto. Debate one this evening. In debate two, ladies and gentlemen. You have the Guardian newspaper for whom the biggest source is the ISI. They've gone out of their mind, these left lip papers. Debate number three this evening, viewers. The left and the Congress are seeing red over the Kerala story. Why? Wasn't this cleared by the censor board? Debate three. And here are the headlines this Friday evening on the debate tonight. Big political controversy as the Congress party promises major shockers in its manifesto, BJP mocks it. The Guardian puts out report claiming India ordered killings of terrorists in Pakistan is the British media pushing the Pak narrative now. The Kerala story back in focus as the left and the Congress object to Doordarshan's move to broadcast the movie. I don't speak to the public. Robert Vadra ducks and dodges Republic specific questions from frame to frame to frame. Big development in the Liquor Gate investigation. The CBI gets permission to question K. Kavita. Sources say K. Jriwal could be next.
massive win for forces in Uri as the army foils the infiltration bid. One terrorist neutralized search and cordon operation is underway. And we're just weeks away from the Lok Sabha elections. And today the Vadra Congress released this manifesto, which is a copy-paste, more or less a copy-paste version of the 2019 one. But this manifesto has many problems. For one, it says that caste and religion should be one of the factors in choosing India's highest judges. Do you agree with that? Is that what we want in 2024? Let's debate. The Congress has released its 48-page poll manifesto. A slew of promises, some repackaged, some that shock and some which mismatch. The Congress in its manifesto, mostly a rehashed one from 2019, has made regressive promises it calls progressive. From carrying out a pan-India caste census to bringing back personal laws, let us tell you what doesn't add up. The Congress has released its 48-page manifesto, which it calls uh, the Nyai Patra. And in, in the Nyai Patra, it has guaranteed uh, a lot of schemes. You will find that the Congress has set a minimum wage of 400 rupees per day for a daily wage worker, which translates to about 1,44,000 rupees a year. So this is an anomaly because who would apply for an apprenticeship if a daily wage worker is getting paid more than him? Now the judiciary. The Congress promises more women, OBCs and minorities to the High Courts and Supreme Court. The question is, why bring quota over merit system even in judiciary? Let's talk about federalism. Rahul's manifesto says, with consensus, transfer of fields from list 3 to list 2. Is this an attempt to weaken the powers of the central government? The list goes on and has invited a political blowback. दूसरी पार्टियों की तरह भाजपा केवल घोषणा पत्र नहीं जारी करती हम तो संकल्प पत्र लेकर के आते 2019 में हमने जो संकल्प पत्र जारी किया था उसके ज्यादातर संकल्प पूरे हो चुके मोदी ने आपको जो वादा किया था वो वादा पूरा करने के लिए एडी चोटी का जोर लगा दिया जो कांग्रेस की फितरत रही है आदत रही है शरारत रही है उसी के अनुरूप उन्होंने एक बार फिर भ्रम पैदा करने के लिए ही इस प्रकार का मैनिफेस्टो दिया है जिसमें से एक भी चीज ना उन्होंने केंद्र में रहते हुए कभी पूरी की ना राज्य सरकारों में रहते हुए पूरी की इज दिस अ मैनिफेस्टो दैट इंडिया विल एक्सेप्ट लेट्स डिबेट Viewers, let me make my position clear. I am completely appalled at the Congress Party manifesto. And I'll tell you why. If you agree or disagree with, with me, I'm appalled, I'm aghast, I'm shocked, I'm horrified at this manifesto. And I'll run an active poll. If you want to say that you more of you disagree with me, you can say so. Welcome back. Uh, Mr. Mehrotra, I'd like to begin with you. Uh, fundamentally, the first point of disagreement I have with the Congress Party manifesto can you hear me, Mr. Merotra? Loud and clear, sir. Loud and clear. Mr. Merotra, my first point of disagreement with the manifesto. Loud and clear. Thank you, thank you, sir. Is with the idea of an apprenticeship. Now, I know it's a well meaning idea saying that if you're an educated graduate Indian, whatever, you don't have a job, we'll give you an apprenticeship, we'll throw one lakh rupees a year at you. One lakh rupees a year, roughly about 8,000 rupees a month, less than the minimum wage. Indians need jobs. This is a halfway house in my, my view. It's not a promise of a job. It's not the promise of employment or increased employment. The Congress party is saying we will increase the number of internships and apprenticeships. And we'll work with the private sector to create them. I don't think this helps, Mr. Merotra. It's a halfway house, don't you think? Sir, the youth unemployment rate for 20 to 24-year-olds currently is 44 percent 
This is not meant for the children of English-speaking parents. This is meant for the vast majority of our of our uh, young who are finishing a one-year, two-year diploma. Everyone here is a graduate. This is not meant for postgraduates. This is meant for those who have a one-year certificate, a two-year diploma, or three-year degree, and they will have a pathway to work. The vast majority in this country do not get a job for more than five to six thousand per month. I work on this data, so I'm afraid I'm aware of this a little bit more. This is not for your English speaking children. This is for the vast majority. And this will provide a guarantee which is already there in the 1961 Act, but has not been implemented by governments. And therefore, yes, sir, of course, Mr. Basu, you will have your chance. So let the others speak. I'm not, a, I'm not an intending to speak when you are about to speak, okay? In a, in a country where there is 44% unemployment, you are unlikely for 20 to 24 year olds, they, they, and in a country which is not generating jobs, so you might, they need jobs, yes, but they are, the government's policies have not generated jobs. We have had the highest unemployment rate prior to COVID in 2017-18 of 18% youth unemployment, which has actually only gone on increasing with all due respect. So you, you probably don't know this, but 62% of those who are in the workforce today actually earn less than 200 rupees a day. That's the wage rate in this country. This is what the PLFS, the Periodic Labor Force Survey data is telling you. So if you're not aware of the facts, there is nothing do, I can do to help you. Now, obviously the English speaking, air conditioned lifestyle balas will not understand this. That's the problem. Okay, I'll get PK to respond with a, with a two-line input from my side. Uh, with, with respect, Mr. Merotra, I take offense to your uh, assumption that people who don't speak English should learn, should earn less than people who speak English. India has changed, <laughs> Dr. Merotra. That's, a re that's India's that's reality or no? a fair assessment. That's, a, that's India's reality. It, it may be, but the second it's, it's not the reality anymore. It may have been the reality in the Doon school days. Now, the daily minimum wage in India is 5,340. Or it can also be seen as 400 rupees a day. To say we'll give less than that. Is, I don't think it would be attractive to young no, Indians. Report, but I leave it to Dr. Basu to respond to you. Uh, Arnab, your reporter completely misunderstood. Manrega is available only for a hundred days, so no one in there, no one is even allowed to earn one one point four four lakh in a year on four hundred rupees a day. It's not even yes. humanly possible because the law doesn't permit it. <laughs> I let P I'll get P K Basu respond to you. I think India is very aspirational, and therefore I believe one lakh rupees a year will not be attractive or acceptable to most. Uh, yeah, Doctor yeah. Basu. You know, I think uh, Professor Mehrotra is living in an India that is uh, long past. Uh, oh, really? So one lakh rupees a year. Uh, domestic servants, even in Kolkata, earn more than that. So uh, I don't think that you know, an aspirational Indian will be looking for a one lakh rupees a year job as an apprentice, apprentice. or as, as an intern. Uh, now, with regard to your data on so-called youth unemployment, uh, this is based on CMIE. Nobody with any sense, no, there is no credibility with the CMIE data. CMIE <laughs> uses a survey, uh, and their survey methods are extremely weak. Uh, oh, really? and it, it, so they don't even have a proper measure of the labor force. How can they measure oh, really? unemployment? So oh, really? uh, PLFS and other surveys have proper estimates of the unemployment rate, which is around 6 to 7%, which is much more credible the fastest growing economy in on the, the world. apprenticeship point please. now you see the point about the indian labor market is that the vast majority of indians uh, work in what are what are called own and owned enterprises enterprises that they, that they run themselves 
So most of India is, in fact, entrepreneurial. Now, uh, <laughs> among those who have jobs, now if you, if you just, just look at the, at the structure of the labor market, the structure of the labor market has changed substantially from what Professor Mehrotra remembers from his youth. Uh, and at, at the moment, a lack of rupees is not anything that, you know, at lack of rupees in a full year, not the, the sort of wage that would, uh, that would attract any aspiration. Okay, so, we've, got, we've got two sides. I can see strong disagreements here. I, I wish to bring in Tuhin and Kapil Madan on the apprenticeship issue. Uh, there are two ways. What I heard Dr. Mehrotra begin by saying is that since unemployment is a real issue, and I don't deny that it is, something is better than nothing. To which my point was that this isn't even something. To which a third point can be, Kapil, you, I want you in the debate and then Tuhin, that this could be a very, very convenient scheme to churn a lot of cheap labor in the country. Therefore, in the name of an ex apprenticeship, this could be seen to be an extremely exploitative situation. And since you say all diploma holders and graduates would avail of an apprenticeship, it could end up reducing the entry level salary for most jobs. I mean, why would people give anyone 25 or 30,000 rupees a month when you can get an apprentice at 8,000 rupees a month? Hence, bringing down the benchmark and creating a lot of cheap labor in the country, which may not be in the interest of the social indicators for the country, or the economic indicators of most people. Uh, Kapil. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Yes, Anam, I think you've got it completely can you unmute wrong. Yourself? I, can tell you, I can tell you from the legal industry also and you know people from the media that I know that when people hire mostly uh, uh, interns in the legal industry, they are not paid. They have to, you know, fend for themselves. Okay. And that's, that's a reality in the country. The same thing happens in the media also when, you know, uh, the kids who are studying or who have just you know, uh, uh, came out, they want to have an experience. If an intern is, uh, which we in legal uh, industry, we call interns and somewhere it is called apprenticeship, they are not paid. There is no system that regulates what would be their term of employment. It is a void which is there in your industry also. And I can tell you it is there in the legal industry also. And no, to I read... Wouldn't. And and to read and say, okay, can you then say every person in the media who comes, you know, for an internship, is he paid or is he not paid? You please answer this. You please answer this, and I will open up opinion poll on this. Okay, if whether you want, media I can I can speak for or not. I can I can I can you, you, I can you say yes or no, I can, then I will run I can a poll. Speak, I, I can speak for. Poll. I will run my own. Yeah, but I'll speak. Can you stop media? raising your decibel? No, I'm responding to you. I'm trying to make. I'm no, responding to you. Issue. I, I don't issue. do these 8,000 uh, rupee internship, so, uh, apprenticeships. So, so, it's exploited. Okay, yes, that's the problem because reply. people people yeah. don't pay at all. People don't pay at but all. But you want to implement it on a national level. You no, want to implement it across what, sectors, what across logic, jobs, across industries. You want to make all young people apprenticeships. A, let me ask no, you, let me ask no, you, would a member of the Vadra Gandhi family accept a 8,000 rupee internship? No, would a member I, of the Chidambaram family accept a 8,000 rupee internship? Think, Why does that clock, question hurt? I, I, I think would they? And to which Mr. Mehrotra will say, no, no, you're English speaking, no, you can't accept no, it. Anab, but non-English speaking should accept it. I think the only, uh, Anab, the only escape and the, the drift you have is, you know, to give an illogical, you know, uh, uh, situation and bring any random person in the debate. We are Sir, debating Anab, a serious issue. You, know, you can is, say okay. yes or no. Couple, whether in media, can... whether in media industry specifically, do you know that there are interns who work and who don't get paid. I come from legal industry and I can say with confidence, I can say... I run one media organization. I don't run all. If others no, are doing it, say? I don't agree no, with it. No. End of now, story. No. Now the uh, point Congress is, wants no, to implement no. it nationally, I disagree I am, with you also. I am, you're looking at a back foot because you don't want to answer this question. Because you know for a fact that in media industry also... No, I've never in my life been on a back foot. I'm very straight. No, you are on a back foot. I'm telling you, you are creating... You are, okay, creating, you, yes no? you are creating in bucket fulls industry, of cheap no. labor in the country yes no? and I don't think why it will work. Yes no? Shall you take a... Yes, okay, straight. tomorrow let's, morning let's I want any Congress way. leader to you, go to any know, part of the country and know, tell young let's, Indians, let's, let's we will poll. make you work, let's we will poll. make you work a full day, a full week, a full month and a full year and pay one lakh rupees.
Anak, you have great. You try and say that to anyone. Right now. They'll tell you which Let's world are you living right in. Now. You just open and you run a poll. Okay, we do a live poll right now. I accept the challenge. Poll. Okay, ask, okay, live poll. Ask, now don't speak. No, ask, live poll. Yes, question ask, on the screen. Ask, Congress, the Congress, question. Congress ask, offer media, of eight thousand rupee industry. apprenticeship. The media industry. Fair or unfair? That's right. Congress paid. offer of eight thousand rupee right. apprenticeship no. for qualified I Indians. Have, I, Fair or unfair? I am saying, I am Fair saying or unfair? The will Indians, will qualified this Indians this accept 8,000 rupee apprenticeship? Yes or no? Do it is on the debate. Do it. The manifesto debate. Arnab, the Congress party on very clearly. On the debate. Arnab, very clearly, the Congress party has a regressive no, economic. Very clearly, the Congress party has a regressive economic outlook, and it wants to incentivize and encourage sweatshops in the country over. Oh. Strategic industries like the semiconductor, the Congress Party is regressive. I don't need to reiterate this, but if I may just expand, you know, because I was shocked with a number, with many, many things in 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 this manifesto. You know, basically, it's a mischievous manifesto with a clear twofold agenda. One is to unleash financial anarchy in the country, and two is to foment and foster caste divides across the, the society. And I can expand each of the, these points to you. You know, when it comes to financial f fiscal profligacy, I mean, they are promising one lakh per poor woman in this country. This added with their other unrealistic promise of legal guarantee for MSP would amount to an expenditure of 15 lakh crore per year, which would roughly mean one third of the budget expenditure. When they make such promises they it is incumbent upon them to explain where would they get the funds for, for look at the number of times they've reiterated the freedom of choice for personal laws when they mention this they need to specify are they going to revoke the triple talaq act they need to specify are they going to encourage polygamy you move from number point three to point. you move from point to point you you say you disagree from with the msp the debate uh, is for the legal guarantee. You disagree with the idea. Or you no, say no, it, it cannot. You it you, it you say you say you say it cannot. Okay. Where are they no, you, the then you get into a debate with Mr. Dr. Merotra. You tell him in what Dr. Merotra. One minute. He says he has used the word fiscal profligacy. He is not against the idea, but he thinks it is economically sustainable. Will drain the country's resources and therefore is a pipe dream. You make your point to him in 20 seconds, I'll get him to respond. You explain no, no, why so on MSP. When you, when, you, when you promise things which on the face of it would incur 15 lakh crores of additional expenditure in the budget, which roughly amounts to one third of the current budget uh, expenditure, you need to also explain where are you going to get okay, these okay, resources okay. from. Because your track record in the three states that you're governing right now isn't great. You have faltered on the promises you He's made in Himachal Pradesh. Responding. Yeah, go on. Go on. So where is this 15 lakh crore number coming from? I don't know. Point one, point two. For a party, because I understand this gentleman is uh, from the BJP, for a party which started in 2014 with a 55 lakh crore total debt is now at two lakh, 200 lakh crore. In terms of GDP, it started at around 58% of GDP. Sir, uh, the in debt terms to of our debt to GDP ratio, sir, it has been way better than US, 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 Japan, and many other sir, countries. So, as an economist, you, know, you should know that more than more than the debt, it, it is the debt to GDP no, ratio which matters. Okay, calm down, I was not speaking when you were speaking. Have the decency to listen to me. I could not even complete my second sentence. So you, a government which started at 58% of GDP is now standing at 81% of GDP in terms of debt. Is a, It's a bit rich for a spokesperson from that party to be telling the Congress, in any case, where is this 15,000 crore number coming from? Because what is this 15,000 crore? Because where did he find it in because the manifesto? <laughs> Okay, let me just quickly respond on, you know, with regard to the fiscal profligacy, uh, let's just understand that, first of all, inflation during the, uh, during the last five years of UPA was 10% a year every single year, and there were twin deficits. The current account deficit reached 5% of GDP in FY 2013. The fiscal deficit 
was running at close to 6% of GDP at a time when the world economy was booming. Now, those are twin deficits. And by comparison, right now, the, the current account deficit is less than 1% of GDP. The fiscal deficit is on a path towards 4.5% of GDP. That is what fiscal responsibility is about. And it's a vast difference. Now, if you just look at the period, even under the, the Narasimha Rao government, inflation was extremely high. The banking system was bust. So the Congress has a record of, uh, of destroying the banking system. They did it twice. Uh, in 1994, 95, there was already a, a, a serious banking crisis. When they left government in 2014, there was the worst uh, crisis in our, uh, in our financial system, what is called the twin balance sheet crisis. Banks were bust. Uh, the, the private sector uh, was unable to borrow because they, their balance sheets were a, a complete mess. So uh, it, it's rich, I think, for uh, somebody supporting the Congress to get away from this reality. This is the reality. Now, if you just also just concentrate a bit on what has happened in Karnataka or, yeah. or Himachal Pradesh. Uh, Karnataka uh, I, began to run out of money I, within six months of, of the government coming in uh, because they had a whole slew of, uh, of freebies that they could not fund. Okay, so we have two so, perspectives. So we I, have I, this. I, got, I, got, I got your view. People are voting. I'll put the vote out. I put the poll out. Ladies and gentlemen, one point I want to mention before I move on, and this will be interesting, Abhishek and Ishkaran, as we get in. The word minorities is used 13 times in the Congress manifesto. Whereas there is not a single mention of the word majority or the word Hindu, but minorities is referred to 13 times. I'm not passing judgment, it's their choice. They want to keep referring to minorities. The word majority is mentioned once, but in the context of the word majoritarianism. So majority is bad. Majority people are majoritarian. Similarly, the word majority is used in the terms brute majority of the BJP in parliament. Quote, majoritarianism has taken over. And, quote, no place for majoritarianism. I'm not saying they're anti-Hindu. But it is interesting, viewers, this is the way the Congress chooses it. My problem and specifically, now, Ishkaran, and this is the burning issue of the day. They yeah. say that when choosing judges to the High Court and Supreme Court, you must look at whether they are from minority or not from minority. Whether they are from this caste or that caste. I say this is the limit. This yes. is the limit. Arna? You will now yes. say, are you a Muslim? Are you not a Muslim? Not if limit. you are a Muslim, I'll give you preference to the Supreme Court. The what is going on here? What does the Congress party Arna? want? Yeah. Who is influencing them? Which party and of the, which of their allies? Left? IUML? Who? Yes, please. Ishkaran, on this hot Arna? part of the debate. Ishkaran. Yes. yes. Arnab, why are you surprised when the sitting Prime Minister of India said minorities and Muslims specifically he was talking about have the first right on resources of this nation? Why are you surprised? A party which wanted to bring communal violence bill. I shudder as a lawyer to think what would have happened if that bill would have come into place. Every person belonging to majority community would have been presumed guilty for any riot which happened in this country, any crime which happened in this country between two different religions, the majority community would have been by default the guilty party. That was the mindset. And why are you surprised by that? They are masters in dog whistle. Do you remember how secularism was inserted in the constitution? A very decent sounding word, but which had been rejected wrong, because our nation has always been secular. When you deliberately insert that view or that word, it is to target a specific vote bank. When you do not want to contest an Amethi and you believe your vote bank lies in Vainat, of course your laws, your manifestos will reflect on that. When you talk about their talking points, the code words are not only minority, personal law, personal law. When they know a triple hey, talaq debate sense. has happened, where this government has given the basic right to a woman that you will not hear talaq, talaq, talaq and be thrown on the road, 
where this Supreme Court gave basic right of maintenance bad. to Shah Bano. They came and they overturned that Shah Bano law, so a Muslim woman should not deserve a basic maintenance. They are the people who are supported Article 370. They talk about reservation. You read about what was happening in really Article 370 to SC, ST and women, but they will not talk about it. Yours, so I'm... The view is very clear. All the times they read views Yours, this to minority many... or secular, no, no, it is a direct target to a particular... I, I one second. This is every not... time the word minority is I'm, used, I'm sure it's that... a code word to I... say what laws we will frame when we come into a power. And those laws appear as if but the drafting every... was this done by much. Tomorrow, Muslim personal but, but law Ishkaran, board. It is all but but Ishkaran, tomorrow you will say... Tomorrow, tomorrow you will say, to, no, no, tomorrow the Congress party will also say that when you are deciding who's going to be the general officer commander in chief of the Eastern Command or the Eastern Air Command, which air marshal or which general will take over, they will say we should see whether they are from this caste or whether they are Muslim or not. This is, I mean, the limit of wokeness. It's, it's <coughs> political stupidity, it's political harakari, and viewers, I am not making it up. I it's read point number enough. five. More women it's and persons wokeness. from SC, ST, OBC and the minority community and the minority community will now be appointed as judges in high courts and Supreme Court. I know that Justice Chandrachur cannot speak because he's in an office, but I'm sure he will be totally appalled at these kind of suggestions. Reservations tomorrow, there's a Chief Justice of India on the basis of Can which religion you are from. Which is an assumption that if you're not from a minority community, in? you will be unfair. It will be a disincentive for people who are not from the minority community or from SCST community to even enter the judicial services because they will say, we never have a right. There will be a reservation in the army, in the air force, in the paramilitary, in the CRP. Everywhere it's going to be only reservations. This is craziness. Ten seconds, I know, you know, I, 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 do you want to add a point to this because Abhishek has uh, no, not spoken? Uh, when it, it is, they, they are equally this mischievous when it comes to Manipur. They have used no, no, the word. Manipur, yeah. This one is sure. too big. You know. sure. This one is big. Do you agree with me, viewers? I, I disagree with this idea. Abhishek. Yeah, but Mr. Goswami, I'm speaking last. I want to make a nuanced point. Representation. Representation is important. You have Justice Gawai, who is in line to become Chief Justice of India in 2025. Justice Gawai was speaking at a conference in the United States last week and he said that I was elevated two years before I should actually have been elevated to the Supreme Court. But I was elevated <coughs> because it was felt that Dalit representation is important. Justice Gawai is a Dalit. And Justice Gawai in 2025 will become just the second Dalit Chief Justice in the 75-year illustrious history of the Supreme Court after K.G. Balakrishnan became Chief Justice in 2009. Now you have Justice Nagaratna, who in 2027 will become the first female Chief Justice of India. 77 years we would have had to wait to get a member from 50% of the population to become the Chief Justice. Representation is important, Mr. Goswami. Chief Justice Chandrachud's father was Chief Justice. Justice Kanna's uncle, H.R. Kanna, was the famous judge who went against Indira Gandhi during the emergency. Justice Gawai's father was an associate of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. Representation is important because when a Dalit or a woman or a member from this the minority so wrong, community, so we had great Muslim chief so, justice, so chief grossly justice unfair, we've had chief so justice, prejudiced, please allow so me malicious, to speak, so sir. vexatious, can you so please allow me to speak? Can you please so allow political. me to finish uh, Abhishek, my point? Abhishek, Abhishek, okay, I'll, I'll come in with a point here tonight. I'll come, I will completely allow you to finish no, your point, but since I have a point to make to you. No, you please allow me please, to speak and give me please, 30 seconds. Please, yeah, you may I've not be interested in listening. Minutes. That's your you choice. Wasted my time. But I am I interested in speaking, in so I will I will uh, force you right now no, to listen to me. No, please give me 35 seconds. Abhishek, you listen give me to me. Another 30 the law is blind to race. I have listened patiently the to The law everybody. is blind to race, Fine. to religion, to caste, to creed, to gender. Those who are deciding on matters of what is just or unjust should not be seen on the basis of their caste or religion. Representation for a judge makes no voice. sense. You know, that's the the entire point you just that don't he want is to let your only speak. and only a man or woman protecting justness. No, you have to. Un if you cannot contradict my point, then you. I, it's. It's. It, Can I, you give I me thirty you, seconds to finish my point? It, but Abhishek, you got I didn't even make this my point. This is a very point. serious matter. My point People is are with me, this. not you. When a chief justice yeah, is a Dalit point will or be a made Muslim after about three or minutes, comes from a community that has not had representation in the judiciary, they bring their lived experience to the bench. 
they bring their lived experience to the bench that is important yeah. because those who come before the law those who suffer the okay. consequences of the law are often marginalized so it is important to have people from those very same marginalized communities okay. dispensing justice right justice is not dispensed in a vacuum how much Human how, beings what percentage would you like their caste, okay, what their creed, their okay what percent okay what what percentage my next question is thank Whether you, you like i understood your hackneyed lived experience I'm argument done. my point is my point is my question is ishkaran what would you like would you want how much percentage should be kept for muslims for panelists. example yeah. among uh, higher judiciary how what percentage ishkaran of supreme court judges must be muslim arnab first you can't just say we, we would like more muslims system. tell me how much 5% 2% 25% or 80% arnab i think the congress manifesto does not even understand the system of appointment of judges in this nation it is through the collegium system the judges are appointing judges themselves they are cognizant of the ground reality they know it is the collegium system which has led to justice gavai also becoming the chief justice of india so firstly the congress needs to be clear what is the system of appointment in this country the judges to say that there is not adequate representation to any segment you are casting as persons on the appointment system which is led by the collegium that is the law of the land i do not know who writes all this there are adequate lawyers in congress the government is not appointing anybody the collegium system justice nagarathan is going to become the first chief justice as the example was given point, very right? good there should be more women judges there should be every no, representation no, they are, they are congress but is the planning some is funny things it's not the government no, i'll tell you some things some things which are being planned and i i went through this and i said before my show tonight i said to everyone there are some things they are trying to do by stealth and they say no you are seeing a conspiracy where none exists and i said no no i am absolutely sure for example point number 8 they are saying we will encourage reform of personal laws but but such reform must be undertaken only with the participation and the consent of the communities concerned meaning the all india muslim personal law board does not allow triple talaq to be abolished so maybe they are talking about the restoration of triple talaq yes absolutely that's a way of saying bring us back we'll bring back triple talaq what do you what do you, what do you think i think the important thing is triple talaq coming back according but also they need to specify to what extent they will support the sharia tomorrow because like you know this congress yes. party like you mentioned the only time they have mentioned the majority community is in the context of majority you know the triple talaq point i want them to clarify when they are saying restoration revival bringing back in consultation it's very obvious sir the what do what is the congress party stand on triple talaq so yeah, will they no, bring the ucc the congress party will the bjp bring the, the ucc era where the the, the prime minister appointed all the judges i mean you know what is the idea of of the of a party saying how judges should be appointed judges are appointed by a collegium not by not by a political party so why is the party talking about this it's absurd oh. It, really it, it, judges from, are appointed uh, by collegium uh, uh, the government of india a, has routinely a, stalled the appointment of judges who don't agree with the ruling party that's Even one second thing is that you talked about mh beg being a great chief justice was stalled mh beg because he does not agree became chief justice primarily because he had voted with indira gandhi he had voted with indira gandhi that was the era when uh, when judges were Listen, appointed sir, i think you should stick to economics how loyal they were seen to the congress economics, hr khanna of course was the only one who was not has recommended names and repeatedly repeatedly the government has rejected those no, 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 the government the has argument refused to issue the, a presidential the, the, warrant the frightfully the government has refused to issue a presidential warrant the, for the appointment the, of the judges the frightfully pedestrian amendments appointment was vetoed uh, abhishek abhishek several uh, high court judges have been vetoed you are very you are very you are very shallow and pedestrian argument was recommended for elevation to the karnataka high court His let appointment me, was stalled me, by the BJP. Yeah, he is he is ratified a few things. He's got to say it. You know, he's like this so student. He's, 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 he's like a student who's memorized some tutes. Yeah, he's got to repeat it. You don't insults. understand. You come up with a half insult. Your insults are getting old. Now, now, now whatever you may be interested. I, you need yeah, to. Okay. People need to watch me hitting yeah, yeah. you nice and hard. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. If the question is. if the judges come with no empathy no, no, of lived experience then they cannot deliver justice uh, uh, what a couple couple please tell him couple Don't couple please tell him couple couple it. please tell him who decided the shahbano case it was a bench with justice chandrachur yes. ranganath mishra da desai yes. chinappa reddy and es venkatramaya and this bench. man comes and says if you don't have a lived experience then then you yeah, that means a silly and stupid argument I really oppose this reservation on the name of religion and these castes in higher education. Now, now you wanted to talk. Now, now you wanted to talk. Kapil, 
Yes, now you want to talk about constitution. It is the same government when you know the Supreme Court, you know, passed a judgment wherein he, the Supreme Court pronounced that you know one of the members from the judiciary will be there uh, for the appointment of election commissioner. What did the government do? They came up with a law and they basically overcame that judgment. When the Delhi and versus the state uh, uh, dispute, the judgment came. Again, a bill was you know, passed, uh, 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 introduced. You know, those, you know, basically that was also done to overcome the judgment passed by the Honorable Supreme Court. And, you know, day in and day out, you get judgments from the Supreme Court where the court come heavily on the government and say that the acts of the government are unconstitutional. We saw in the electoral bonds case, we also saw when you know the government in Maharashtra how uh, uh, how the sitting uh, governor exercises his power illegally, which the honourable Supreme Court has said. So this is this is the government who should be last okay, in the who to should counter? talk about constitution of India. Arnab, the simple point is Iskaran wants to you. Two, Iskaran briefly, two, and then two, I have an important yeah, Arnab, point. Two, and have two small points. Firstly, whether a certain power belongs to Delhi government or union does not affect the basic right of women, which was the maintenance right given by the Supreme Court and taken away by the Congress government. Whether the woman should have a right of triple talaq and be thrown on the street in modern India or she should have some legal protection, that is the right given by the government. And I am very sure Kapil is an excellent lawyer. He knows how judges are appointed in this country. If there is any imbalance or there is any need of any greater representation, the collegium is sufficient to do it. Because if the government starts appointing, then immediately you will have the question now, of independence of judiciary, governmental interference in appointments a, and judiciary, and a whole I different argument. I have a very important here. point, so, so I need at least five minutes to deal with it. For. I need allow at least five minutes to deal with it. I need five minutes to deal with it. I want allow me one minute, couple, couple, one minute. I need five minutes on my last point. I need five minutes on my last point, couple. 30, 30 seconds. I just want to respond to Ishkaran. I think Ishkaran is a very seasoned lawyer. He goes only to the constitutional court. There are other judicial, you know, uh, courts which are not the constitutional court, like lower judiciary, for which the appointments happen by giving examination. <laughs> and in Let those examinations, you have, you know, you still have the system of, you know, uh, uh, reservation. Few seats are reserved exactly. for, you know, categories. So, yes, Ishkaran is right when he says that uh, the it Congress is manifesto is talking of High Court judges, and Supreme that Court is judges, only for the High not court entry and the level court. to the judicial not service. The anyway, now, 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 <laughs> you have got your 30 seconds. Now, let me move to my main point. The main point, the main point. No, no, don't continue. The main point. This is a very important point. I have always believed. I have always believed. And today, I have no doubt. I believe there is an agenda why the Congress party says that India is not a nation. We've heard them say this not once, not twice. We've seen this repeated assertion by this party. And then when I call them anti-national, they say, how dare you? But their supreme leader and all their leaders, you know, PK, you had the unfortunate experience of meeting him in once in Singapore. And he says India is not a nation. It's some kind of a negotiation between states, some, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Now, in their manifesto, they say, we will review the distribution of legislative fields in the seventh schedule of the constitution. And we will build a consensus on transferring many or some of these fields from the list two, which is the concurrent list, to list two, list three, the concurrent list, to the state list. Now, my point is, why do you want to have an exercise of consensus when you've already decided? that you will weaken the concurrent list, reduce the powers of the central government, and manifold increase the powers of the state government. Even Santosh Merotra, though he would want to support the Congress in this, let me ask him. Mr. Merotra, do we want to transfer subjects like bankruptcy, insolvency, and major aspects of criminal law entirely to the state list? Do we realize the consequences of this? Criminal law excuse is me. state and police. Excuse me, Arnab. Excuse me, you asked me a question. May I answer? Yes, police, so the, police is already in the state list. I think your researchers have not. Here, eh? Okay, let, 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 oh, no, let, 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 let Dr. Dr. Merotra have a go first, please. Yeah, so it's very straightforward. I don't think the manifesto says which parts will be transferred from the concurrent to the state list. I think the larger point is much more important, which all your viewers need to understand. This country needed 
75 years ago to have a very centralized constitution and a centralized system of governance. Oh, it would interest you to know yeah, yeah. that, that it, it would interest you to know that while we are the democracy, we are the federation, and China is has a unitary constitution, and they have a one-party state, they are much more fiscally decentralized than we are. There's something wrong there. And all the literature about Chinese economic growth is actually tracing its economic growth back to its fiscal decentralization. We are a large country. We are a much more diverse country. We have no choice but to actually put in place a much deeper fiscal decentralization. And therefore, that's the spirit that is inherent. You're contradicting in yourself. Response. You've just that contradicted yourself, uh, Dr. Merosa. May, 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 may I come in and ask you a counter? Just, One minute. Please, no, but you've no, contradicted please, yourself sir. and let me explain why. Have you have begun your point I by saying, point. Uh, I have allow not. me, <laughs> I, allow, I, 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 I'm, I'm absolutely sure and the viewers are sure you have, but let me tell you why. Because in the heat Go of ahead. the moment, you began Go. by saying, how do you know, Arnab, which items of list three concurrent list will be taken? You followed it up by saying that fiscal redistribution is what is required. If it is fiscal and not criminal procedure, not preventive detention, not marriage and divorce, not actionable wrongs, and if it is things like bankruptcy, insolvency, trust, trustees, if it is things like uh, economic and social planning, trade unions, labor disputes, social security, these are the fiscal matters. So you already said it, that we want to take the fiscal matters away. And I, my argument is, if in this great country of ours, Dr. Merotra, you take away and reduce the fiscal control of the center, you are basically making a terrible argument for a weak center. And no, I do not, not see, all, I do not see not this argument as a conceivable all, argument all, for any person watching my program today. Yes, sir. Let, no, let him reply. Let him reply. It's not gospel truth because Arnab Goswami has said it. The fact of the matter is there is a vast body of literature in the whole world which has demonstrated that as, as countries become richer, they become more fiscally decentralized. So let's rest assured. Well, I say, I don't country, care what I literature exists. I say, I say, smart. Dr. Merotra, we need to be no, a no, stronger no, no. nation, not a weaker no, 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 no. nation, no, no, no. or not a nation as you would like it to be. What's it? P.K. Basu wants to have a go at you on this one. P.K. Basu. Oh, please don't teach me. Don't teach me. That's why I don't like coming on your show. No, no, no. There's a very important. The, the, you got, the problem me. is, you uh, have this unilateral approach, Dr. Uh, no, Merotra, uh, no, whether you like to come on my show or not, please. history will record please. the fact you that know, my arguments no tonight no. have left you completely incapable of or responding. Or no, or no, the answer is on the other side. Yes, please. good riddance from him. Just one second. There are two, before the show ends, there are two very mischievous points which you have left out. Oh, this concurrent list one is a big one. Let me, you know, when it comes to decentralization, it needs to be seen in a larger perspective and therefore, before the show ends, I want to tell you, you know, I want to remind the viewers also, look at what they have written in the context of Manipur. They are emphasizing administrative settlement without ev you know, ever mentioning territorial integrity of Manipur. Does that mean they are supporting Kuki land? Okay, one you know, these are issues where... Okay, okay, PK on the concurrent list issue which no, no, Dr. Merotra walked out on. I think it's important to understand that... Unfortunate, throughout, unfortunate. Throughout, lack throughout of the tolerance. time that Congress was in power, they were centralizing power. They were centralizing India on a fiscal basis. Uh, right through the time. Now, talk about China. The interesting thing is that Close China up. is quick you know, has a, a degree of fiscal decentralization, but uh, their their uh, the GST, the value added tax, is completely central. And as we can see, China is a completely centrally controlled the, the point, state the point throughout being tonight, history. See, we have what, what, what we've, what, what we've done is we've gone we've like gone we've States, gone a little bit it is too deep, perhaps. We upset so people, but I tell you, but I tell you, PK, 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 I'm sorry to cut you short, but I'll say this tonight. When you go deep, when you sift below the surface and you see the intentions, you have the kind of debate we've had tonight. We've had a great response and I stand by every word I said. We need a stronger center, not a weaker center. These are dangerous things. They should not be tolerated. 